Welcome to everyone back. Um, today I'm going to be working uh, again on this drawing that I started during my last live session. And I was working with uh, Sanguine and for whatever reason our communication got lost. And I just want to follow up on that. I was uh, able to start this drawing during that live session. Um, and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish the drawing. I set up a camera with a more detailed look so you're able to see what I'm doing. Uh, this is again not a live, it's a recorded, pre-recorded uh, and edited video so I'm able to have more control over the uh, definition of the video and all that good stuff. So, all right, so let's just go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and talk about the materials once again that I was using. Um, during the last live session, I was working with uh, a brass folder and uh, I was using uh, a lighter uh, red chalk and a dark red chalk. I set up the drawing with the lighter red chalk using uh, ovoids and uh, just basic uh, construction, very simple construction, uh, you know, focus on gesture. And then I started to uh, outline before our, our communication communication got cut off, I was outlining this drawing. And um, I just also have here, just in preparation to finish the drawing, a uh, white, natural white chalk, okay? Now this uh, white chalk I made on my own and I talked about that. I think I, in the uh, messages, I posted a recipe to make this white chalk. This is slate lime that has been um, finely ground and uh, I sieved it through a very fine uh, sieve um, and then I let it dry uh, on sun uh, with a very, very, uh, you know, uh, just a little bit of uh, air uh, but covered and it solidifies. This is almost like a plaster and then you're able to, to draw with it and highlight, almost like a white chalk pencil, commercial white chalk pencil. So again, this is an exploration of traditional materials used by Renaissance masters, so I'm recreating a lot of these materials. Now, if you can uh, find any of these materials, you could always use, uh, you know, commercial sanguine, the contacrine is not so great, but, you know, it, it really does not resemble the natural red chalk material. So the reason that I'm using these materials is so you can see how they actually work. All right, so let's just go ahead and get started with the drawing, and I'm going to continue to I'm using the, the lighter red chalk to set up the shade, shade mass, okay? And I just wanna uh, go over this drawing very lightly and establish the shade mass, okay? And at some point, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just simplifying, okay, some of these details. And the good thing is you could use this rag to, uh, to stump out, I just use this, uh, this is cheat cloth, and printmakers use this to tap tap out their uh, uh, their their plates. That's when they're sort of doing subtle effects. So we're sort of doing similar technique here, just tapping out the tones once we apply them. Okay. So let's just go ahead and work on some of these transitions. Okay, by just laying in the material very lightly. Now, I'm using a more of a traditional uh, drawing style, reminiscent of what the Italian masters would have been doing with their drawings. And that is a very different development than a tonal drawing that is, you know, based on a photograph. This style is based more on um, uh, accents, accenting uh, and, you know, outlining. So contour, a lot of contour work, and hatching. So that's an important consideration when you're learning to draw and, you know, it's important to, I see a lot of artists, uh, you know, using photography and you have to go through a translation. I mean, we're not copying, I'm not copying a, a, you know, the effects of a photogra of, of photography here. And that's important to mention because um, this drawing style is more based on the idea of cross-contouring and uh, the development of anatomy 
So this is all very important to mention uh, as I'm laying in these drawings and you know demonstrating how the sanguin was used. Uh, now you could use it in a more tonal style and that's perfectly fine, it's up to you, but I'm gonna be using it more like a traditional uh, sort of a Renaissance style of drawing, which is more, more based on accents and very quick uh, highlights, for example, if I wanted to bring out a form. And now this paper is really gonna help me uh, establish some of these quick highlights. And that's essentially what this is. This style involves just highlighting and you know, just taking the, the most essential aspects of the drawing. So, and that, is, that cannot be ignored because that is part of the style of, uh, of the Renaissance master. I mean, they're working with uh, a lot of uh, contour, a great exploration of contour as I'm doing here and from the inside to the outside. And that's, you know, that's it's a beautiful style. Uh, and I really enjoy that. For example, I'm building this form as an ovoid and then I'm gonna just go ahead and build it uh, with more contour. So, okay, so let's just go ahead and bring out some of the anatomy here. And all these inside forms are going to uh, create this beautiful contours that go in into inside the form and they turn and at that point I will turn the forms I will go from a contour to a tone and you see this in Michelangelo Michelangelo did that a lot he would sort of uh, start with a contour and as he moved in into the, the inside of the form he turns it into uh, sort of a, a, a tonal exploration so there's really no line in the inside of the form, only in the contour, okay? That's important to, to analyze and to, uh, you know, to explore. So, so let's see. And sometimes losing the contour is important as well. Okay. in some of these. I'm using the darker sanguine chalk and one of the amazing things that you see in the uh, classical drawing style of the old masters, the Italian masters, is that they they're very conscientious of what we call the third contour and the third contour is really just uh, it's almost like a theoretical uh, exploration of the sh core shadow and you could create a lot of form with, with, the, with the core shadow so for example if I come over here and I just put a core shadow right there and the third contour why I've been asked why the why is it called the third contour some um, some artists call it the terminator line but I call it the third contour because it has a relationship to the three axis in geometry. So, uh, as you can see, by if this was a box, the, the third axis would be that corner plane right there. So, and that coincides with a turn, okay? And that's where the, the shade begins. Okay, so it's a turning, the form is turning and it's turning away from the light. So in that corner plane, usually you could put some anatomical information and it gives a lot of rotation. So that's, this is an important uh, development for Renaissance artists. And you see Michelangelo use it all the time. Again, I'm, I'm doing it there, okay. And when you when you have that, and then the, your light plane, and I talk about all these theories in my drawing class. I have a course available at Udemy. You could check out, and it has all these theories, uh, and it, they're really helpful when you're learning to draw. And there, I could just let's see. 
focus on a little bit on the anatomy and exaggerate a little bit of the anatomy to give uh, you know just gesture and motion to the drawing. And going back to uh, our exploration of the red chalk, red chalk is really an amazing material because it allows for some very fine lines, which I've already mentioned. Um, really, really wonderful, wonderful, beautiful calligraphy that, you know, it's very subtle and you could certainly use that to your advantage when you're especially working on this medium Uh, explore some of these rotations, okay? So, and I could bring out more detail here. I mean, I could opt to just lay it. It's a very flat tone, and just bring out some of the detail with. The eraser. I could flatten out this tone with my. And I've mentioned this last week uh, the hatching and then stumping out with a rag and then going back over it to create very, very subtle tones. You could use your finger, but I get a more subtle effect. But somehow the finger just. Uh, the oil in your, fin in, in your fingers uh, fixes the, the sanguine tone. And it's harder to, um, you know, to, to manipulate. So let's bring out some some tones here. And again, the third contour right here. The light's coming here. It's coming. It's coming here. There's a rotation here, and then this is bouncing here, and then bouncing back. So. By exploring all these uh, all these phenomena, you could able you're able to get some beautiful drawings and beautiful light and shade uh, effects as you're working with the anatomy and you're working you know with the form exploration. So it's important to I always teach my students the first thing that I do is I teach them how to identify light and shade behaviors. And th the red chalk is just a gorgeous uh, medium. Um, if you want to check out some amazing uh, artists that use this, you could Pontormo did some amazing drawings. You could check out his drawings online, and also Andrea del Sarto. Those are great Renaissance mannerist artists. Uh, it's important to what is the difference between mannerism, which a lot of perhaps most people don't know. Uh, if you look at a drawing from the 19th century, it's it's a uh, it's more accurate. It's uh, there the artists are trying to capture exactly what they see, whereas mannerists were more interested in the expressive qualities of anatomy. Um, they were allied to the style of Michelangelo, a lot of them. So. Uh, they would have been uh, you know, practicing the variation of his style, and uh, you know the, it, it had a, a very important um, uh, foundation in, in you know the ideas of humanism. It's the it's uh, it's almost going back to the old Greek. In Roman uh, values of uh, humans as the measure of everything, um, so the human body was perfect, and uh, therefore the anatomy should be celebrated. The human body should be celebrated, and that is a very important aspect when you're, you know, studying Renaissance art. Um, to take that into account because it, you know, it's the aesthetics really are sort of um, 
dictating how the artists are expressing themselves in what medium, right? What, they're, what tools they're, they're using. All right, so let's just go ahead and get more subtle to here. And these are, these are drawings that are meant to be a little bit more uh, selective. Uh, I'm not doing a lot of rendering here. Just want to demonstrate these are sort of gesture drawings. I just want to demonstrate how these beautiful materials give you some amazing qualities in your drawings. So let's bring out some detail here. I'm going to sharpen my chalk, my dark red chalk, to bring out more detail. That's one of the things that I love about the uh, the red chalk, the very dark red chalk could go to a very very fine point. This one seems to be softer, and this one's great for laying in the figure like I did in the beginning. But the darker variety really goes to a nice point and it's harder, and you could get some uncanny detail with this. I mean, this is a small scale figure and I'm able to get some very fine lines. And like I mentioned, I always keep the, the dust just like I use it for washes. Okay. And if this is your first time watching this video, I want to refer you to my last live video uh, where I started this demonstration. Unfortunately, the, the communication got cut off and I was not able to uh, continue the live presentation so I'm, this is a follow-up video to that uh, to make sure that you know, the presentation gets finished and you know there's a follow-up to what I'm doing here in the channel so okay and again if you're this is really not a drawing class uh, this is really just intended to um, talk about the materials used. I do have a, a full drawing class at Udemy and I also do live online courses uh, with private instruction and where I take the students through a full curriculum and we talk about perspective and uh, still life drawing, figure drawing, anatomy, all those things that are so important when you're beginning to develop your drawing skills. So. If you're interested in that, you can log on to my website, luisborreroart.com, and there you could just send me a message, or there's a link where it says online private classes. You just could sign up, and uh, starting in August, I have a few classes available. Uh, there, everything's online, so I do online demos, such as this one with obviously an interaction so all right so I'm gonna clean up this drawing and then the, the feather really helps that's described by Sanino Sanini to keep your drawing clean and once I have this point I could just go ahead and begin some finer details. I don't want to get too too detailed here, but I just want to show you how how you could achieve this amazing details with this chalk. I could just come in here and That's, that's what I really enjoyed about the, the red chalk. I mean, I could just go in here, and even though this is a small scale, I could uh, bring out a lot of information because of the fine point. Now, the Conte crayon just breaks off, and it's, I mean, you could, you could sharpen to a fine point, but you're not able to get, perhaps, the, the, the keep the point as long and not to get, you can't get the subtlety. I mean, there's artists that go through great lengths to keep it sharpened constantly, but I find this a lot easier to use. And a lot more subtle too, especially with this beautiful prepared carta rosa paper. 
I talked about how Leonardo da Vinci used these. Uh, and here I can just show you how, what a beautiful line quality I could achieve with this. Cool, and, uh, and, and also very, very rich darks, so. I just push that dark. That shows you how, and again, I could take it back once again. And build again. I could take my eraser and bring out some lights. And these, these drawings are sort of meant to be schematic, you know. Um, Just create a little point with my eraser. So it erases quite nicely. And I'm just bringing out some details here in the rectus abdominis, which is the, the abdominal muscle. It's a band of muscle that goes all the way down to the pelvis. Just going very, very subtle. Okay, and yeah, very nice quality. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, bring out the highlight right here. The calcium oxide or slate line works really nice. Um, it's a white chalk, I like it. Could do some, but I don't wanna go too much with it. This is beautiful flesh tone is already giving me a lot of beautiful, uh, beautiful half tone. This is just to sort of highlight those extreme high planes. I could hatch with this very easily too, just to bring out a little bit more form. bit of a light coming back here. And this really helps when you're when you I use these type of drawings, uh, it is very sort of schematic drawing when I'm uh, plotting out compositions. I start with a, a thumbnail and then from there I move on to uh, move on to uh, a, a more elaborate drawing like this. And I may even paint from a study like this. The old masters use these studies to, to, to paint from, you know, if they had a very difficult pose. And there I can explore the contour. For example, here is there's slight, so I don't want to push the contour too too dark. But here I will. Yeah, I'm really exploring the how this is working. I'm really making sure that this is informing the anatomy. So sort of things that, you know, uh, you have to learn. Uh, you have to learn how the anatomy is working and how it behaves. I recommend uh, Dr. Paul Richet's anatomy book. It's a wonderful classical manual on anatomy. It was used by French academic artists in the 19th century. And that's the manual that we use in school. It's a wonderful manual. All right, let's 
it's important to go for the bony points always important to go for the bony points um, and I, I'm going to accentuate the, the knees here because again those are and look the crisp lines that you could achieve with the red chalk really really wonderful yeah, it's just stunning red chalk the amount of line work that you could do so let's just push this we have more information here Some areas I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring out some information in the, in the, sh in the shape mask. Michelangelo did that a lot. He brought some information into the shape mask, which is usually not the case with 17th century artists. They were sort of suppressing the, the information in the shape mask. But it, but in the case of Michelangelo and a lot of the other painters, um, they did. A lot of painters from the Renaissance, the High Renaissance, and earlier, they were. They, and Michelangelo had a. You know, he he modeled his forms a lot like a sculptor, so. Very interested in the idea of overlapping form. For example, this tri bicep here is coming and overlapping, and then this comes behind. Okay, and that will give a nice three-dimensional volume to the drawing. So let's bring out a little bit more light here, light plane, very, very schematic. I've I've uh, discovered something, especially when you're modeling. Uh, if you tend to go too much detail with too much detail you lose a little bit of the the movement in the drawing so I, I try to do some very quick touches which I like and I see that in a lot of um, home master drawings they're very schematic because they're trying to sustain that movement throughout the work that's a quality that I like again if you're into modeling and you know doing some very very finished uh, type drawings. Well, you you know this may not be the style for you, but um, but you could certainly adapt some of this technique and do more finished uh, drawings with the sanguine, as I've seen artists do. I mean, that's uh, it, it. All depends on your you know where you're trying to achieve with your work. Okay, so. I'm just doing some very subtle modeling there and let's see if I could bring out just a tad of detail and the eyes that's a crucial and the eyes and the nose do a little bit of a cast shadow underneath the nose I'm going to go ahead and bring out more detail around here, around the rib cage. spend hours refining these drawings and uh, getting a really nice solid tone a nice sense of detail it's really up to you to you, what you want to achieve the medium you do more accents you could also do accents with the with a brush. So 
what I'm going to do. Just revive a little bit of this bistering. Use my nice stable brush. If you wet the sanguine, you get some very nice accents. So if you're looking for areas to highlight or to accentuate, you certainly get a lot of beautiful effects with this, uh, this technique. You can even patch with the brush slightly. Okay. Okay, so let's just go ahead and put some little details here in the eyes, very methodical details. And it, it does have a little bit of an ink. It's just to get a nice sense of an accent there. Just to show you how much information you could get. These are very uh, subtle touches that will give the drawing a lot more information and just contrast in areas. Even retouch the contours Let's just go ahead and do some accents here on the bony points again. Okay, so um, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. And uh, again, thank you for following the channel and coming by. Uh, and again, for those of you that are here every Thursday, uh, posting questions. I really appreciate the support and I'll be back next week with more uh, techniques uh, of the Renaissance and uh, also I would like to tell you a little bit about my uh, uh, course on Udemy. Check it out if you're looking for a more structured course that's a good option. It's uh, under classical drawing uh, at the Udemy server and also if you're interested in live classes uh, I offer on live online classes at luisborreroart.com and you can send me a private message and I'll be happy to uh, have you in my classes. All right, so thanks again for being here and if you haven't su hit subscribe, please, I appreciate the support and uh, again, uh, next week I'll be back with more techniques and I want to thank everyone for coming by. Have a good one.